morning, and welcome to another Wednesday night Bible study with me, your host and facilitator, Minister Mark Walters. Tonight, we're going to talk to uh, you tonight from Judges chapter 5, the song of Deborah and Barak. I have an exciting lesson for you. It's going to be a quick one. We're not going to be here longer than 30 minutes. So just sit back, get yourself ready. Uh, we're going to get through it. It's, it's a song of, of praise um, to God for the victory over um, Sisera and the army of the Canaanites. So uh, we're going to talk to that tonight. And we're going to get through that tonight. We're going to get through the, the book of Judges chapter 5. I'm going to be in, be out, and then let you get back to your Wednesday evening activities. All right, so good to have everyone here. I want to give a shout out, shout out, of course, to our pastor, Bishop Oliver Sobrian, his awesome wife, First Lady Rose Sobrian, first daughter, Sharona Sobrian. I want to give a shout out to my wife, Vanessa, my family, uh, Emmanuel, Jeremiah, Angelina. I want to give a shout out, of course, to all of you who are joining from all over the globe, all over the country, and right here in lovely Landover Hills in Maryland. I want to just thank you so much for joining us and, and so glad uh, that you could come. Please share the, share the link if you can. Please remember to like and subscribe um, to the channel. If you haven't done so already, we have eclipsed the 1,000 um, subscriber mark, which is a milestone. Um, so I'd like you to continue if, you, if you're watching us and you don't uh, you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe and then hit the like button and so that you can be notified when episodes are upcoming. All right, we're just going to go to the Lord in prayer tonight and then we're going to jump right into the book and then we're going to have a look. So Father, we bless your name. We lift you up tonight. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give the honor, of oh God, tonight. We want to worship you and we want to bless you, Lord God. We want to thank you, Lord God for what you're doing even right now, Lord God. We thank you for blessing us, for keeping us, for being our Lord, for being our God, for being our strength, Lord God. We just bless you, we praise you, we honor you, we glorify you, we thank you, oh God, that this live stream is going forth. We thank you that lives are gonna be blessed, lives are gonna be changed tonight, and lives are gonna be educated and informed, Lord God, tonight of what is going on in your word. Uh, give us strength, give us power, give us the mind, oh God, to love you. I pray, oh God, even tonight, Lord God, God again tonight, that I would decrease, Lord God, you would increase, Lord God, that they would hear not from the wisdom of man, but that they would hear what thus saith the Lord tonight. Have your way, O God, tonight we pray. I be glorified, be praised, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my God, my strength and my redeemer. All right, let's jump right in Wednesday night Bible study. It is on the air. Minister Mark Walters, the song of Deborah and Barack. Let's jump in. As we go every week, we talk about this. These are the tribes. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit. We're going to see the Eastern uh, Manasseh tribe this week. Uh, Manasseh, uh, East and West, Naphtali, Asher, Zebulun, Issachar, Ephraim, Dan, Benjamin, Judah, Simeon, um, Reuben, Gad um, are the tribes. And these are the surrounding nations. Is Aram, Ammon, the, when we get the Ammonites from here, Moab, the Edomites are down here. Okay, and then the people of Canaan, the Canaanites are like over here. All right, so this is the allocation of the land to the 12 tribes of Israel after the conquest of Joshua. All right, let's press on. So this is just another way to show the same thing. Not going to spend any time with that. And we know the overview of jud Judges. He gets his name from its contents. The people raised up Judges after the death of Joshua. They raised up judges to deliver Israel in the times of this disunion, decline, and decadence. The judges were mighty warriors. God's spirit went upon them, and they were mighty warriors for God. They fought uh, great battles. The spirit of the Lord descended upon them, and they were able to do great things for the Lord. And, and uh, we'll get into the cycle in a second. The book places emphasis upon the spiritual significance of events and not so much on the chronological continuum. In other words, the, the, the Bible is talking about the events. Not so much how they uh, go in chrono chronological order. Um, so, of course, we know the judges cycle by now. You should have. Um, they usually fall into sin, which is the sin is usually idolatry. Then they suffer. Then after they suffer, they cry out to God. This is supplication. And then after they cry out to God, God raises up a judge and he gives the judge his Holy Spirit. The judge delivers them and they're saved. They live. Uh, under the judge's rule for a while, and then they, oh, the judge dies, 
And then when the judge dies, they go right back into the cycle and they start all over again. All right, so let's jump right in. Judges chapter five, verse one says, then sang Deborah and Barak, the son of Abinoam on that day saying, and, and the background for this is that Sisera has been killed. The Canaanite army has been destroyed um, by, remember the story of Deborah and Barak who slew um, Sisera, the great general, and um, Jabin, the leader of the Canaanites. And so we, we, we know that um, um, they're now in a celebratory mood. God has helped them. They were able to destroy the enemy. We know that um, Jael um, ran the, the, um, the spike through the head of Sisera. Um, and so uh, Sisera dies, the army is dead. The, the army has been wiped out by you know, 10,000 of the Israelites have wiped out the, the army of the Canaanites. And now God has helped them and now they are celebrating. And so when they celebrate, when they when they have victories, um, they celebrate just like Miriam got the timbrel and started to dance. Uh, when the Egyptians were drowned in the Red Sea, we know the story, she began to dance, they began to sing. The, the rider and the horse had been thrown into the sea and they came in up on the people of God. So it's the same thing here. The people of God have triumphed. Um, this great leader, this great woman, Deborah, has led them um, through a great battle and they have... Um, destroyed uh, Sisera and the people of the, Can the Canaanite army and also some other kings who had who had joined along with the uh, Canaanite army. And we're going to learn that in the song. So then sang Deborah and Barak, the son of Abinoam, on that day, saying, Praise ye the Lord for the avenging of Israel, when the people willingly offered themselves. Hear, O ye kings, give ear, O ye princes. I, even I, will sing unto the Lord. I will sing praise to the Lord God of Israel. Lord, when thou wentest out of Seir, that is back in the time of Exodus, when the Lord was speaking for, to them from Mount Seir, when thou marchest out of the field of Edom, the earth trembled and the heavens dropped, the clouds also dropped water. Um, the mountains melted from before the Lord, even that Sinai from before the Lord God of Israel. And this is the time, of course, when, hearkening back to, when Moses went into the mountain Sinai, so there was, uh, so what's going on here? There was praises to God for the victory. And it talks to us tonight also that we should praise God in every victory. We should praise God when he brings us out of stuff. God loves, the Bible says that he inhabits, that dwells in the praises of his people. So, you know, this is a time when God is really dwelling. And, and it also speaks to the fact that when we sing songs of praise, you know, let me stay here for a second. When we sing songs of praise to God, God loves when we sing songs of praise. And songs of praise ought to be celebratory in nature, that they're celebrating the goodness of God. They're celebrating the power of God. They're celebrating the majesty of God. They're celebrating what God has done. These are praise songs. And we're praising God. We're praising God for what he has done. You know, when your kids do something good in school, your kid gets an A in school, um, your, 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 your kid runs a relay race and he anchors and he wins. Your kid, you know, does something spectacular, gets a good job, and graduates from, from college. These are things that are very laudatory and we, we laud praises. We heap praises upon our children and we're thankful to them and we're celebrating them and we give them claps and some of us give them big parties and all kinds of things like that. And so we are very, very much um, in a celebratory mood when someone does something that brings us pride or that brings us joy. We are celebratory. Even so, we should celebrate God for the things that he has done. And we do that in our case um, through praise and through praise songs. In churches, we have time for praise and worship, and we should not neglect the time of praising God um, for his mighty acts, praising God the wonderful things that he has done. Psalms 151 talks about praising God for all his mighty acts, all the things that he has done, the wonderful things um, that he has done. So we, we thank God for what he has done. We praise God. We worship God. But there's a time when we praise God for all the things that he has done. So this is what um, the, 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 the example that Deborah now gives us is that they have just won a tremendous victory. And now they're going to praise God for what he's done. So there was no singing until after the victory. They'd only been mourning previously. You know, that's the time of suffering. And so God raises up Deborah and Deborah goes through and slaughters the enemy. So in Deborah's song, 
There are many aspects. It thanks God for the victory. It celebrates the zeal and the bravery of the rulers of certain of the tribes. There's a certain of the tribes. It chides the other tribes, and we're going to see those two, two or three tribes that stayed at home during this conflict. It honors God for his supernatural part in the uneven struggle um, between two earthly foes. It curses those who refuse to take part in the spoils after victory was assured. It blesses the woman who was bold enough to slay Sisera. It talks of the disappointment and the anguish of the mother of Sisera. It pronounces a blessing upon the people of God and a curse upon their enemies. So these are all the, the components of Deborah's song. Again, it thanks God for the victory. It celebrates the bravery of the rulers. It chides the other tribes who decide to stay home. It honors God for his supernatural part in fighting against the enemy. It curses those who refuse to take part in the spoils after the victory. It blesses the woman uh, who was bold enough to slay Sisera. It talks of the disappointment and the anguish of the mother. It, it, in fact, it, it kind of just uh, makes fun. It, it mocks her, uh, the mother of Sisera. And it pronounces a blessing finally upon the people of God and a curse upon the, the enemies of the people of God. So in the days of Shamgar, we see this at the end of chapter 4. In the days of Shamgar, the son of Anath, in the days of Jael, the highways were unoccupied and the travelers walked through byways. The inhabitants of the villages ceased. They ceased in Israel until that I, Deborah, arose, that I arose a mother in Israel. They chose new gods. Then was war in the gates. Was there a shield or spear seen among 40,000 in Israel? My heart is toward the governors of Israel that offered themselves willingly among the people. Bless ye the Lord. Speak, ye that ride on white asses, ye that sit in judgment and walk by the way. They that are delivered from the noise of archers in the place of drawing water, there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord, even the righteous acts towards the inhabitants of his villages in Israel. Then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gates. Awake, awake, Deborah. Awake, awake, utter a song, arise, Barak, and lead thy captivity captive, thou son of Abinoam. Then he made him that remained have dominion over the nobles among the people. The Lord made me have dominion over the mighty. All right, so God raises up Deborah and Barak. In the days of Shamgar, the highways were unoccupied. The land was full of anarchy and confusion. There were bandits everywhere. There were no no public roads were safe. And so because of that, um, the people were forced to live in groups of great numbers uh, to protect themselves from the roving bands of wicked men. Um, again, in the song we see in these first couple of verses, we see that Israel forsook God uh, for new gods um, that could not help them, of course. Could the other gods are not real. They're just in that. They're just things that people create. And now different um Created gods have different demons probably associated with them, but the, the actual physical wooden god can't do anything. But Israel forsook God for new gods that could not help them. Uh, this was their sole reason for the issues as a nation. When they served God, they were at peace and they had rest and safety. When they didn't, there was chaos, confusion, suffering, and division. All right, so... Uh, but how could an army of 10,000 without arms defeat a well-armed one with 900 chariots of iron? The answer is they couldn't, but God could. Um, the Lord chose a new type of war. I call it a species of war. In this case, a woman gave the orders. Um, the war was directed by prophecy, which Deborah said um, that Sisera is going to be killed by the hand of a woman she had two prophecies in there and god put into the hearts of ten thousand men to have faith without arms to overcome a greater well-armed company and god put into their hearts so this is something a um, great miracle that god put in their hearts the courage the word we're looking for there is the courage um, to have faith to overcome a greater well-armed army uh, and so what we have to understand is that um, in the natural, things look insurmountable, but God said to Abraham, I am God. Is there anything that's too hard for me? Duh. And so we got to put our trust in the Lord. We have to always trust God. We have to know that God, if God be for us, who can be 
against us. So God was for them, and so it didn't matter who was against them. Even Sisera, the great general, he was forced to flee on foot. We went over that last time. The entire army was slain by men and the captain by a woman. So out of Ephraim was there a root of them against Amalek. After thee, Benjamin, among thy people, out of Makur came down governors, and out of Zebulun, they that handled the pen of the writer. So this phrase right here, it's still sort of like the meaning of it is sort of lost in antiquity. Uh, we'll, we'll get to see what some of this uh, means later, but the pen of the writer, uh, we'll have to see what that means. And the princes of Issachar were with Deborah, even Is, uh, even Issachar and also Barak. He was sent on foot into the valley. For the divisions of Reuben, there were great thoughts of heart. Why abodest thou among the sheepfold, sheepfold to hear the bleedings of the flock? For the division of Reuben, there were great searchings of heart. Gilead abode beyond Jordan. And why did Dan remain in the ship? Asher continued on the seashore and abode in his breaches. Whew. Zebulun and Naphtali were a people that jeoparded their lives unto death in the high places of the field. All right, so Zebulun and Naphtali were a people that fought in the war. I'm going to... Just I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Um, Dan stayed on the ship, and Asher stayed on the seashore. <laughs> Asher stayed on the seashore, seashore, and they abode in his in his ship. And the kings came and fought. Then fought the kings of Canaan and Tanakh by the waters of Megiddo. They took no gain of money. They fought from heaven. Look at this. They fought from heaven. The stars in their courses fought against Sisera. The river of Kishon swept them away. Uh, that ancient river, the river Kishon. Oh, my soul, thou hast trodden down strength. Then were the horse hoops, hoops broken by the means of the prancing, the prancing of their mighty ones. Car curse ye, Meraz, said the angel of the Lord. Curse ye bitterly, the inhabitants thereof, because they came not to help of the Lord, to the help of the Lord against the mighty. All right. So what's going on in here? So this is talking about the actual battle. So, and it's talking about, first of all, the conduct of the tribes during the battle. So Ephraim moved into the valley. Um, Deborah was from Ephraim. And so most of her tribe followed her into battle. Benjamin followed Ephraim among the people to war against Sisera. Um, uh, Eastern Manasseh, the commanders came to support Zebulun. Um, the, the word says those who carry the pen of the writer or which is the commander's staff, as it's translated in the NIV. So it's, it, it, it may be that it was those who carried, uh, you know, the, the leadership reign or leadership mantle um, in that tribe of Zebulun. Um, the princes, Issachar, their princes rallied to Deborah. So Issachar supported um, Deborah. Naphtali supported Barak. They followed close at his heels. Um, Reuben made great resolutions to help but ultimately didn't help because of infighting between their factions. Uh, Gad stayed beyond Jordan. Remember where Gad is located. And Dan remained by his ships. And Asher remained by the seashore. Seashore and clung to his bays. So if you look back here, um, so uh, Ephraim helped, Benjamin helped, Manasseh helped, Zebulun helped, Issachar helped, Naphtali helped, Reuben eh, did not help. Gad did not help. Dan did not help. Asher did not help. So uh, it's some um, bigger portion of them. So the bigger portion of them helped, and many of them did not help. Several kings of Canaan helped Jabin in his war on Israel. They were defeated in Tanakh by the waters of Megiddo and Manasseh. The kings who fought expected to get much money and loot, etc., in, et in the defeat of Israel they were overcome because the people of Israel were fighting for their land. They were fighting for their families. They were fighting for their good um, that they fought. And, and, and also they fought with uh, this, the supernatural power um, from the angels of God. Because the, the angels of heaven fought for Israel on this day. Uh, it, it does go to, to speak to what also happened in the book of Daniel, where when one kingdom on earth was being removed, 
Um, when the Babylonian kingdom was being removed and replaced by the Medes and the Persian Empire, there was the first war in the heavenlies, and then that it, that, that 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 angel or that 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 demon who rules over that kingdom, he has to be thrown out. So when he's thrown out, then the other um, ruler comes in, and so it plays itself out on the earth realm in that the kingdoms are overthrown, but there are spiritual um, battles going on in the heavens, and only God can fight those spiritual battles, and only angels of God can fight those spiritual battles. So, so what happens is then for the Canaanite kings to be thrown out, there has to be a Canaanite prince in the heavenly realm that's also thrown out. And so he was thrown out, and um, and that was done. There's an angel, angels are fighting in heaven for Israel on that day. So wars are lost to one on earth based on wars lost to one in the heavenlies between the forces of God and those of the enemy. So, and then he talks also about Miraz, an unknown city whose inhabitants would not help Israel destroy the enemy. So Miraz would not, they were a city that was there and they had the ability to help Israel, but they chose not to. So the angel of the Lord cursed them. Um, and verse suggests um, that one way Israel won was that God sent great thunder, lightning, rain, and even hailstones to defeat the enemy because God was fighting for them. So God sent rain, thunder, hailstones, lightning, everything, just threw the whole kitchen sink at the enemy in, in order to, to win the battle for Israel. And so God was doing what God only can do. And so God used the natural elements um, to wage war upon the enemy and to get them out of there um, only because the people of Israel really trusted in God and asked God and begged God to help. And if you ask God for help, God will bend his ear towards you. God will bend his, his arms towards you. God will stretch out his hands towards you and God will help you. If you call upon the Lord, he will answer. If you ask the Lord uh, for help, God will send help. If you ever get in a situation where you feel helpless, you feel without strength, call upon the Lord. They that call upon the Lord, they call upon the Lord, call upon him in trouble. I'll, David said, I will call upon the Lord in trouble. He will deliver me and that right early. So God is going to help us when we call up on his name. I will, since most of you only know songs, I will call upon the Lord for he is what greatly to be praised. And if, and if I and if I call upon God, so shall God deliver me from the hands of my enemy. Whatever that enemy is, God is going to deliver you when you call up on his name. All right. So we're almost out. We've got about six more verses. Blessed above women shall Jael, the wife of Eber, the Kenite be. Blessed shall she be above, above women in a tent. And we know who she was. She was the one that drove the the tent spike through the temple of Sisera. Let me a second here. He asked water and she gave him milk. She brought foot butter in a lordy dish. In other words, she kind of set him up, falls asleep. She put her hand to the nail and her right hand to the workman's hammer. And with the hammer, she smote Sisera. She smote off his head when she had pierced and stricken through his temple. So that gives us a little bit more detail to what happened in chapter five. So in other words, she 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 may have cut off his head too, is what we're, is what we're seeing here. Um, so after she rammed his head, she took a big tent spike, which they used to hold the, 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 the tents down in the, um, in the land. And then she took that and whacked it through his, his temple, which is here. So from here, straight through, so it must have gone all the way. So it had to be at least, you know, that long or greater, went through his head, hit through the ground. And then after that, apparently she chopped off his head and she showed his head to, um, uh, to Barak to, to, to say that, you know, Sisera is dead. At her feet, he bowed, he fell, he lay down. At her feet, he bowed, he fell. Where he bowed, there he fell down dead. So this is more like a song, a little poetic kind of thing here. She's, um, Deborah is singing. Uh, the mother of Sisera, now look at this, this is Sisera's mom, who was used to him coming back from war pretty speedily because, you know, they they were basically bullies. They had the best armor, best armament. They had 900 chariots of iron, so they had all kinds of great armament, and they were fighting other nations. And so she expects him to come home 
um, pretty early. Um, so <laughs> Deborah is imagining here um, what Cicero's mom must be thinking. So she says, the mother of Cicero looked out of the window and cried through the lattice. In other words, she, she opened up the lattice and not like we had um, these awesome um, Pella windows here. You know, we don't, they didn't have those, they didn't have any of those um, double, triple pane glass windows with argon gas in the middle. No, none of that was going on. They just had these lattice things that they opened and closed um, to let air in, let light in, um, and cried through the lattice. Why is his chariot so long in coming? Why tarry the wheels of his chariots? Her wise ladies answered her, yeah. She returned answer to herself. Have not they sped? Have not they divided the prey to every man a damsel or two? This is what um, Deborah is imagining. Uh, Cicero's mom is saying, um, have they not sped? Have they not like hurried up and, and wiped out these Israelites? Have they not now divided up the, 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 the spoils and the people and the captives? Have they not created captives? Have they not given to every man a woman you know, or two? So when, when armies went in and, and wiped out other armies, then they took the women and the young women, virgins, whatever, they took them and they you know, divided them up to different uh, men in the, um, uh, in the army for slaves and whatever. Um, and uh, to Cicero, a prey of, of diverse colors. In other words, um, you know, just uh, lots and lots of loot and, and beautiful clothes and coats and, and most of that's the armament this that's the that's the um the robes and things of the leaders and the leadership of the of the nations that they would have conquered a prey of divers colors of needlework of divers colors of needlework on both sides meet for the necks of them that take the spoil so what Deborah is saying is that Cicero and company when they went into a land they really ransacked the land they ran over the land they slayed everything in sight they took the, the young women captive and, and divide them up amongst their troops. They took the best clothes, the best jewelry, all those things, the tapestries, and they used it for their own good. That Those were the spoils of war, and that's what the armies of Sisera had always done to every nation. Not in this case. <laughs> so, so what she says here is, yeah, that's what you planned for us, but God had a different plan. And so what the enemy... Um, meant for you. I'm speaking tonight that God has got a different plan for you. So he says, let also let all thine enemies perish, O Lord, but let them that love him be as the sun when he goeth forth in his might and the land had rest for 40 years. All right, that's the end of our lesson for tonight. I have one chart here that I'm going to talk to that. It's a tale of two ladies, but it's a blessing on Jael for killing Sisera. She is praised by the women of Israel for this incredible act of bravery. Uh, and it talks also about the anxiety of Sisera's mother and the maids. Um, and we talked a lot about that the women lived in anxiety until their loved ones had returned home from war. Um, Sisera had usually won very speedy victories because he had much better equipment, as I like to say. His mother must have sensed that, you know, something is wrong here. This is very different. Um, Jehovah had fought with Israel this time. And so Sisera's army never came home because Sisera met more than his match. I'm not even going to say Sisera met his match. Sisera met, you know, a billion times more than his match. And so God wasn't messing around with him and God just took him out. All right. So the wrap up is a prayer for the enemies of Jehovah to perish. A prayer for the friends of Jehovah to shine forth in glory as the sun in all his might. And the land had and the land had rest for 40 years. Ah, but then I have, they should have some dramatic music. But the land had rest 40 years, but guess what happened? You know what's coming up. You know what comes up. So they had rest for 40 years. And then um, so next time we're gonna get into the story of um, Gideon, I believe is we're getting to next so um Gideon is coming up um after this they're you know what they're gonna do they're gonna sin they're gonna sin again Deborah's probably gonna die they're gonna sin and um you know you know what's gonna happen then we're gonna be back at the top of the cycle again where we're gonna they're gonna sin they're gonna suffer they're gonna call out for help and God's gonna send uh, Gideon this time all right all right so that's the end of our lesson on tonight um, in the book of Judges, chapter 5, I'd like to <clears throat> lead you on the road of salvation. 
Um, the Bible says that we are all sinners by nature and by choice. Every one of us have sinned. We've come short of the glory of God, but God demonstrated his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, um, Christ died for us. And so we receive the eternal um, life as a gift. The, the Bible lets us know that when sin pays you, the payment is called death. That's your wage from sin. So if you keep sinning, keep living for sin, your payday is coming and the payday is death. But God gives you the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. So when we live for Christ and we do what God has wanted to do, and really all it is is just allowing the Holy Spirit to live inside of you. When the Holy Spirit is now living inside of you, then you have eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So I just wanted to lead you uh, right now in the sinner's prayer. The Bible tells us that if you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, you believe in your heart that God had raised him from the dead, you will be saved. I just want to lead you into the sinner's prayer. Um, Jeremiah, give me some praying music here. It says, Dear God, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that my sin deserves to be punished. But I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who lived and he died for me. And he rose from the grave on the third day. I now turn from my sin and I trust Jesus Christ alone as my Savior. By your word, which I have heard and read tonight, I thank you for the forgiveness and the everlasting life I can now have through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. So we pray, dear God, I know I'm a sinner and I know my sin deserves to be punished. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you lived and you died for me and you rose on the third day. I now turn from my sin and I trust you as Christ alone the Lord of my life, my Savior. And by your word, and by the confession of my mouth tonight, I am accepting you into my heart, and I am saved. And if you gave your heart to the Lord tonight, if you prayed that prayer, then Jesus Christ is going to enter, well, the Holy Spirit is going to enter into your life, and, and you are now saved, and you are a child of God. Your name has now been written into the Lamb, into the Lamb's Book of Life, you have passed from death to life. I don't care what you did, um, but it's all forgiven. Your sins are forgiven, and they're cast into the sea of forgetfulness. So God has saved your soul, and now it's time for you to allow the Spirit of God to dwell in you, to grow in you, and to live in you. And now you need to find also a church and be discipled. Um, tell somebody about the goodness of God. Tell somebody about what God is doing in your life, and find out what work God has for you to do here in this earth realm. Now the church church doors are open. Find the church. There's a good church right here, 7550 Buchanan Street. Um, you can come and be baptized. Let God um, dwell fully in you. And again, like I said, if you have if that's your testimony and you have given your heart to the Lord, uh, then please drop a line in the live stream. Let us know what God is doing in your life. Love to hear from you so much great news tonight if you've given your heart to the Lord. Thank you so much. God bless you. Um, at this point in time, um, Jeremiah should be showing you the giving link. Um, so govern yourself accordingly. There, we give through um, Cash App, we give through PayPal, and we give through Zelle. And so govern yourselves accordingly should be showing up on the link. Um, God bless you. Till we meet again next time, as I say every week, I love you and God loves you even more. Have a great evening. Thanks for watching.